Hello everybody, it's Amy here. Uh, if you have watched my previous video, you would or probably have heard me mention numerous times that this year I embarked on a uh, challenge or uh, what do you say, a journey if you will, of starting the majority of my flowers from seeds indoors. I did dabble in a little bit of winter sowing, but the result for me, I'll share with you um, how the results uh, went, but I would have to say indoor sowing is probably my preferred methods. I have heard other gardeners talk about their success in terms of winter sowing, and that's why I started, I, I kind of experimented this year. Uh, but for my uh, first year growing things from seeds, I will have to say yes indoor is probably my preferred and I'll show you shortly how I did it and why I think it was successful compared to my previous year where I've tried numerous times and have failed miserably in terms of being able to germinate them and also to grow them on okay so let me just show you uh, I kind of place all the things that I will need to demonstrate I have here a pot of soil I know a lot of people uh, mentioned that it's best to use seeds so, uh, starting uh, medium or soil because they don't have a lot of these bigger bits. I bought a whole bag of it and I barely used it. The only thing I used primarily was just regular mixing soil and that's what is in this pot right here. Okay, so here's a pot uh, of soil and then I have here this is a mystery to me. I can't figure out why I had none of this growing. So I thought I had started some of this indoor at the beginning of the year. I think sometime in February, March, nothing grew from this. So I don't know what happened to the seed that I started. Perhaps I did not start it. Anyways, I'm gonna use this as an example today to show you how I do it. So here's the seed packet. And these seeds aren't too small, so they should, they're not that difficult. They shouldn't be too difficult to sow. So these are the seeds. And another thing that I've never really used in the past, but I started using this year, is uh, vermiculite. So this is what it looks like. And once again, I know other gardeners suggest to use fine, really fine um, uh, vermiculite, but I have grabbed this bag because that's the only thing I could find at the time. And they are a bit on the chunky side, but you know what, from my, from my experience, they worked perfectly well for me. I have nothing fancy. So what I used to water, you're probably gonna laugh at me. I try to use as much household products as I can. A, I don't want to buy new stuff. B, you can reuse what you already have on hand. So here's a empty water bottle. Here's another empty, now have a bit of water in it, uh, pop bottle that uh, we have on hand. And as you can see, I've poked holes in on top of here. So I would do the same if I was using this bottle. And what you need to poke the hole, this is what you'll need to poke the hole with. Just your regular thumbtack here, poke some holes at the top, and voila, you got yourself a watering can. Uh, the reason why I use this instead of something like this that has a sprout, that has water coming out of here, is that I find the water distributes so much better with something like this because they're fine or smaller holes and they don't kind of create uh, what you call it like a dip or a huge hole that may affect your root system of your baby seedlings or your seedlings that are very small and delicate so hence why I don't use this type of watering can when I'm dealing with my seedlings and so instead of using just a single pot like this, if I'm seeding a whole bunch of seeds, once again, household items that I'm sure all of us have on hand, this is just your regular takeout container um, that uh, I have um, in my possession already. So I just fill up the soil up to about here. And then once I put the soil, the seed, water it in, here's this top, I just cover it up 
and this works beautifully. I started so many of my seeds this way this year and they worked really well. Free, you already have it on hand, you don't have to spend the extra money, which I really, really love. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing, okay? Okay, so here is a close-up of my table. I have some soils already here. I'll try to pick some of the bigger pieces and toss them out. So what I usually do is I will pre-moisten the existing soil a little bit, not too, too much. Don't really need too much water, just so that it's moist. And then once I have that done, I take my seed. For seeds, especially the teeny small one, what I do is I use my tweezer here. The seed is right here. And I just gently place it into my pot. And then I'll put two in here. Okay. I already have another tree that I've started, so I won't be putting too many in this one. So let's see if I can show you. Here's the one seed. Here's the other seed. So at this point, I either use the back of my tweezer here, or if you have, you know, a pencil or whatnot. So all I do is I gently push in my seed not deep at all, but to make sure that it touches the soil surface because that's where the moisture is, right? And then once again, I will moisten it lightly so that you don't dislocate the seed. And the one of the reason why I push it down so that it doesn't float all over the place. So here again, uh, seed in the soil, water it a little bit, tiny bit. The next step is I think one of the most crucial step. The vermiculite here, for a seed that size, you can kind of uh, sprinkle a tiny bit more than you would if it was a tiny seed. If it was a tiny seed, you wouldn't do as much. So barely really covering the surface of the soil. And then this is another part I find uh, plays a role in my success is that I water it once again. Don't have to saturate it per, uh, per se, but just enough that is moistened, okay? And then, if you have a lid for it, you can cover it with a lid. But what I did is that I have a piece of food wrap. I use this a lot. I also used it for these type of containers too. If I didn't have a matching lid for it, I would use a food wrap like this. So I would wrap the top. You don't have to airtight wrap it or anything, just so it's covered. And the purpose of the wrap or the lid is to keep the temperature, the moisture, the humidity uh, consistent so that your seed will be able to uh, germinate and you know some seed took only two maybe even five days max to germinate others will take a bit longer so i kind of just watch it daily um, just to see if there's any uh, seed sprouting as soon as it sprouted though i did lift this up to allow air circulation so pretty much that's all i did with uh starting my seed this year um i used this for every single seed that I started. And I have to say my rate of success was anywhere between 80 to 90%. Some seeds were like 100%. And it blew my mind what a difference it made just tweaking a little bit. I mean, I've done this before. I have to admit, I did not use the vermiculite to cover the top. I used soil, you know. Um, using covering it as indicated on the package but yet i was not very successful for this year no matter what seed i grew no matter what the size of the seed was i used this on the top did not use any soil just this just the vermiculite and it worked beautifully so i think tweaking a little bit and just kind of changing things up a little bit have really added to my success success 
So if you have started seed or have done it for many years and have been very successful, please feel free to share with me what you have done and why you think it worked. I would love to learn from other people, but so far this has been such a pleasant surprise for me this year. I've been able to add so many different flowers. If you go look at all these, these aren't even all the seeds that I started. I think this is about like 30 of them right here, but I must have started anywhere 35 to 40 type of seeds. Um, some have already done flowering, so they're not on display anymore. But yeah, I would love to hear uh, what you have to share and what have been working for you. Okay, so here is another example of how I start uh, my seeds. This is something I started, I think, what, two, three days ago. And um, as you can see, this is a nine slot tray I have. And once again, this is a sushi container that we just had over the weekend when we had our my sister and her family over. And here's the container. So once I finish sowing the seed, put the vermiculite over. Instead of saran wrap or food wrap, um, I place the lid on top. It is not airtight but it does help to retain the moisture. This one right here is currently sitting um, indoors and uh, inside a house under somewhat of a grow light to see if it would germinate. And this is the, um, what is it called? The daisy? Where did I have it? Uh, the one that I just finished demonstrating to you not too long ago. Now, oh, here it is. Whoops, I thought I lost the package. This is the, the seed right here. It is a perennial. So I know I'm a little bit late to the game, but I really want this one for next year. So I'm gonna to try to seed it anyways. If it germinates, I'm going to um, pop it up to, into a bigger pot and grow it on. And then maybe sometime in the end of August, I will plant them into my garden and see how it goes next year when it comes back, whether it would do well or not. So I will keep you posted with regards to that. But yeah, see something simple like this. Um, tray I already had on hand because of um, flowers I previously bought saved the tray and then sushi container there you have it nice and simple inexpensive and we're reusing plastic which is good for the environment right okay so as you can see I have a whole bunch of seed packages right here uh, I grew quite a few this year from seeds. If you have watched my previous videos, uh, I'm sure you have heard me mention that I gave myself a huge challenge and it was kind of an exciting but nerve wracking challenge for myself because I was so unsuccessful in the past in terms of um, starting things from seed indoors. So I'll highlight five seeds that I grew that I most likely will never grow again. I did not like them. I didn't like the growth habit. I just don't find them um, worthy of growing again. They just not on my um, coming back list. And then here I have 10 that I will definitely grow again. I love these. They add so much value to my garden and being able to grow them from seed um, is super exciting because I'm able to grow a lot of things that otherwise I would not be able to add to my garden. One of the reason is, although we learn like a certain type of flowers, it doesn't necessarily mean that we will be able to find them at our local uh, garden center or nursery because they just don't care the variety. I think last year or the year before, I ran into that same problem. I was looking for a few flowers, drove sometimes an hour away and was still not able Able to find it so being able to start things from seed gives you that flexibility and give you that freedom to add whatever flowers you want in your garden um, one thing about seed though sometimes your local garden center may not have them in stock but I discovered something this year and I've never tried it before I thought I was not able to find gumfrina in my neighborhood or sorry, in my local, at my local nursery. So I ordered uh, this packet online. It's a bit pricier than what I would like to pay, but I really wanted to try it. So I ordered online. So there you go. Even seeds or variety that you cannot find at your local center, you're able to order them online. So once again, it gives you the flexibility and the freedom to grow whatever it is that you desire. So 
this year has been a super exciting year for me in terms of gardening. I grew so many seeds indoors. I think one of the remarks I made to my sister was, hey, I don't understand why this year I didn't buy that many new flowers, but yet my garden is jam packed with flowers. And one of the reasons is because I started so many of them indoors. I totally forgot that's what I did. But anyways, it's a fun, it has been a fun experience and I really look forward to next season to maybe try other seeds or a different variety of flowers I've never grown before. Uh, so you know what? I would like to uh, show you around the actual flower itself in the garden. Some might not be in uh, at the height of its growing season, like say for example, the candy tuff here. Um, it's an early growing uh, flower. So most of it is already done its flowering period and there's only a few that's left in my garden. So unfortunately I won't be able to see, show you all of the variety or all the colors that's on this package, but I might be able to pull pictures or uh, videos from my previous um, videos to add onto the screen so that you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I have five. Five, I will not be growing again. I picked my top 10 that I would definitely be growing again. So let's come along, I'll show you around. Okay, so let's go with the first one. This one is a petunia. This is the package that I grew the seeds from and this is the color. I absolutely adore the color. This is so, so pretty, it's vivid, it's so uh, beautiful you can see it from like a mile away the only downsides to this uh, plant or this flower that makes me don't really want to grow it again is that it's like this it's not very bushy it has more of a trailing habit and I kind of want it to sort of grow more upwards maybe trailing a little bit, but more upward and more robust in terms of flower uh, blooms. Here's another example here. I have two in here and you can kind of barely see the flowers because it's just not really producing that many. So unfortunately, this is not one that I plan to uh, grow again in the future. Next is number two on my list. Uh, flowering cabbage. This is the variety that I started from seed. As you can see, these two are ginormous. They're quite decent looking, but the one thing that really disappointed me, okay, let's, I'll show you a few before I share my remarks. Here's another one. It's starting to form flowers here. This is the other one and this. Do you notice something different from the package and the one that I've just shown you? The coloring, right? So based on this package here, I should be getting pink, burgundy-ish, magenta, and really, I got none of that with any of the ones that sprouted for me. So because of that, and this is, was exactly what I was hoping for, uh, those colors to add to my garden because they will play so well with the rest of my color scheme but I didn't achieve that and I don't think perhaps I don't know maybe I'm doing something wrong perhaps someone else grew these and they did place them in a different position or I don't know maybe I did something wrong but if you have been successful growing it and you are able to get it to produce these gorgeous pink magenta um, center here please let me know but I have been unsuccessful so it had made my list of not to repeat again flowers or plant okay third on my list is uh, of daisy called African daisy I really liked the color on this package I thought it would kind of add a pop of color in the garden but when I started to grow it, and this is the actual flower itself, it's at kind of at the tail end of its bloom, so I know it doesn't look its best, but just to sort of highlight why it will not be coming back to my garden is this. So you look at the top here, it's a pretty long and leggy plant. And the worst part about it is that it flops all over the place. If you can see here, I have to stake it up and then tie it together 
otherwise it just goes everywhere and the color truthfully although I wanted a pop of color this type of yellow and this orange I don't love so unfortunately this painted daisy will not be coming back to my garden third on my list I think it's third right yes is this cat mint the nepeta here that I started from seed I really was looking forward to this purple to add to my color but to my utter disappointment the blooms on these and I grew so many of these my gosh I must have grown like 10 15 of these plants uh, to my disappointment it's white I'm not saying white is an ugly color to be honest with you I'm totally fine with white but I think I've mentioned before because I have so many roses in my garden I really wanted to add purple kind of just dotted all along so if you see here I have one tucked here another one is tucked here like they are tucked all over my garden so if I decide to yank these out because it's just not the right color I'm gonna have a lot of work on my hand to do that because um, I can't show you here there's some I'll should back there too yeah I don't know what happened they are white there's some that I've tucked some that is behind here and here for sure I had some right there white blooms right there um, I also have some tuck behind there too so anyhow white color not the purple that's on the package oh talking about purple this was the look I was going for and the color I was going for but it definitely is not hence why I had to buy these ones to to achieve that look that I was going for and this is exactly what I was hoping for when I seeded those seeds so yes uh, they will not be coming back to my garden and if I'm still sitting on the fence whether I should just leave it for this year they're perennials they should come back next year for me and then maybe see if they might change into purple next year so we shall see unfortunately this one will, be, will not be coming back to my garden okay unfortunate fifth on my list and this is a brand new one for me this year and it's probably going to be the last one last year it will be in my garden is this uh corn cocoa variety here that i grew this year from seeds i seen another gardener grow it and she had it in her garden i thought it was so pretty and it is i'm not saying it's not look at it it's quite pretty and this color is gorgeous it actually um, came or come in um three different varieties so far for me so this is like a super light pink and then over here i have a white one and then oh oh it's not in bloom right now okay so if you look there's one bloom let me see if i can get into there So it also comes in that magenta color, um, which is quite pretty. I'm not saying it's not pretty. One of the things I do not like about it and because of it is not coming back. You see how long and tall the stem is? And I think everybody knows this about me now. I hate plants that flops, that require so much maintenance goes every which way when it rains when it's windy you have to stake it up well that's the problem with this plant hence why this one here is tucked into this little corner because I'm hoping the surrounding plants will help support it to stay up but yes it's flopping everywhere and my plan was to plant it tuck them inside these little corners which I see if I can show you right here this is one right there well that's what I had planned in my head but in reality it just never grew never got bigger stayed super small when it is tucked amongst other plants maybe it's just not getting enough sunlight but that was the whole idea in my head is that it would pop out kind of be very whimsical adding a little bit of texture adding a little bit color to you know the surrounding uh, space 
it did not do that for me. So unfortunately, it will not coming back. Oh, look at that bee. So cute. This is one of the reasons why I have so many flowers in my garden because I have all sorts of different types of insects, pollinators that come to visit. And it's so amazing to watch them in my garden. Sorry, I kind of got a little bit off track there. So yes, these are the five flowers that I started from seeds this year. Did not quite love them, so they will not be coming back to my garden. So let's go and um, see what the, the 10 flowers that I will be adding and continue to add to my garden in the future. Okay, let's start off uh, with one of the stars in my garden. And I would have to say it is probably this one right here. It is an aster. Uh, this was the package and you won't believe where I got this one. So this I bought at a, a Dollar Tree. So it's a type of dollar uh, store that we have here in Canada. I had never grown it before. Package looked interesting. Loved all the color that it was on the package. So I thought I'd give it a stab. And you know what? To my surprise, it has now become one of my absolute favorite in the garden. And to be honest, it didn't start off that way. So when it first started blooming, it came out like this. Very frilly, very kind of feathery. And I wasn't keen on the look at the beginning. But as time went by, and as more uh, came into bloom, and especially as the other colors start emerging. So the first one I got blooming was this color right here, a very, how would you, magenta, deep, uh, I don't know, deep, not even purple, what is this? I don't know what how to describe, describe this color, but anyhow, I started to get a lighter version of it, and now, just recently, I got a white one of it, and then there's a purple one that's quite pretty as well. So here it is. So this is from that package that I just showed. I bought it for 79 cents, and I think there was a special, it was like $1.50 for three or something like that. Anyhow, it was a while ago. So I have really come to love this flower in the garden. It adds so much texture so much color and the best attribute or the best quality of this aster is that it is non-stop blooming it has been blooming one of the first um i think flowers to bloom bloom in my garden and it is still going strong you won't believe it but i think i've only removed perhaps two to three blooms so far and the rest have been blooming since the beginning of, I would say, oh my gosh, I'm gonna take a stab, uh, early June-ish. And look at the color that it gives in the arrangement I have in the middle section right here. It's quite lovely. It's won a spot in my heart and it's definitely have won a spot in my gardening this year and perhaps for many more years to come. So that's the aster. Okay, so the next two that I want to point out, because they're so similar, I just, uh, I'll do both of them at the same time. These are pansies that I started from seeds indoors. I also attempted to grow these uh, using the winter sowing method. I got to say that I prefer the indoor method more. And the reasoning is, um, here's, I'll show you what it the winter method looks like. So here is a planter that I um, planted up with pansies that I used, uh, grew uh, from seed using the winter method. I have found and noticed that the blooms are much smaller and the plant itself is a lot shorter than the ones that I grew uh, indoors. I unfortunately don't have any blooming right now but I'll insert pictures or video and to show you what the difference between the two is so this planter was a bit of a flop for me because of how poorly these pansies did they took forever to grow they stayed tiny for the longest time I don't know what I may have done wrong maybe someone else may have had better luck uh, 
growing these uh, using the winter method but for myself I did not like it whatsoever so I don't think I'll be using the winter method again to grow these I will definitely be growing them again but using the indoor method because I found the flowers the um, growth of the plant did so much better so that has been my experience growing uh, these um, pansies here um, this year and I absolutely love the color and I gotta say the blooms last for a very long time until we had the crazy heat come along and of course that's when they really started to suffer but I've now have them hidden in a very shelter area so hopefully they will recover Okay, next on my list is the gumfrina that I started from seed. My oh my, did these surprise me. I have to admit, when they first started to emerge and started to bloom, I was sitting on the fence whether I really like these or not. A of the color, the three different colors uh, planted together and just its effect in my garden, but they have really grown on me and I actually like the three colors together to be honest with you and this variety I actually uh, ordered the seeds online which is a first for me usually I try to find all of the seeds uh, locally at my local garden center but I couldn't really find it at the beginning of the season for whatever reason so I ended up ordering online I mean the price is a bit tiny on the high side I mean it's not like you know it doesn't break your bank or anything like that but it's a bit more expensive than a buying it local but yeah I really like uh, the look of it in my garden I have it planted in three pots so one is here and another one is here and then I have one tucked over the other side I love the height of it I love its growth habit the stems are very strong they do not flop um, at all which oh gosh I hate plants that are tall leggy and flopped everywhere I need to stake it up this one is definitely one that holds its own and yeah it is very pretty and the combination of the three color is gorgeous I love it it grew on me and it is coming back for sure okay so I've talked about uh, these blue tiny cute blue flowers before these are a, a variety of uh, or a type of for, forget me not my first year ever trying this variety out and you can see how pretty they are the flower is very similar to your common one that grows in the spring I love that color so much that I needed to I, I try to find another color to substitute it and I happened to come across uh, this one right here is a Chinese forget me nots and it the difference between this one and the spring flower one is the stem for this one is quite tall. The one thing I don't love love about this plant, it does get a little bit leggy like this and it does tend to lean. I don't know if it's just my case that is doing that. Maybe someone else is growing it and they're able to grow it like a little bit sturdier or it doesn't flop but regardless um, that should be a strike for me already in my garden that I won't be uh, growing it again but because of the pretty blue color I'm going to overlook that aspect of this plant and I will be growing more of it next year I'm gonna keep an eye on this patch or this uh, this um, plant to see if they will overwinter for me and come back because they're supposed to be a perennial for me or not for me a perennial type of plants and let's hope that it is a perennial in my zone so I have it planted in a few pots right here so there's one and also there's some over here I just find the blue color just so pretty in the garden and at this time of year there's not many that have this type of coloration so this one made it on my um, to come back list. Okay, so this one is a repeat in my garden. I grew it last year. Let's uh, take these roses aside. Here it is. So these pretty white fluffy flowers here that you see. Oh, sorry, the ice cream truck just drove by. <laughs> Okay, here you go. Um, these pretty white flowers here, these are called Fever Few. I grew them last year in pots and they were placed in the middle of my display. But this year I've decided to tuck them inside here um, amongst the roses and the other flowers. Here are some over here. And I just really like that pop of color um, amongst the uh, flower beds. And I also have it growing 
in a pot here. They don't overwinter very well for me, or it didn't at least last year, but it, what it did do though, is self-seeded quite well. I had a whole bunch of seedlings without having to seed it myself. So what happened was the seedlings, or the seeds, sorry, from the flowers last year must have fallen in some of the pots at the bottom here and what I noticed in the spring was a whole bunch of its seedlings started emerging. So if you don't want so many of them, you might want to deadhead them before they have a chance to form seed pods and self-seed itself. But you know what? I actually don't mind whatsoever. I really like the look. Um, and I'm maybe hoping that these guys will self-seed and I have more of it over here next year, next season. So yes, Fever Few is one that I think I will enjoy um, coming back to my garden. Okay, let's go to Snapdragon. It is one that I'm hoping will overwinter because they are the perennial variety. At least it says so on this package right here. So I grew these ones from seed inside, indoor, and they germinated really well, pretty much 100%, I think, germination rate for me. And uh, in terms of the seedling, uh, it grows really well without too much fuss, too much babysitting, to be honest. And this package here uh, comes in a variety of color, all quite lovely. So here's a really deep purple magenta color. You also have it coming in white, very pretty. A lighter form of the magenta color, which I absolutely love and adore. And even lighter, almost like a lilac tone to it now. And then I got this um, orangey rust burnt uh, color here. Uh, this is probably by far my least favorite, but it's still okay. Um, here are more of it. This one is probably the tallest one of the uh, bunch that grew from this uh, package right here. Uh, I think I showed the yellow already. Here's the yellow. The only one thing that I have to say about this is on the negative side is that it is super long, tall. If you're growing for cut flower, they would be gorgeous for that purpose. My bad because I placed it in the front of the border because this being my first time growing them, I had no idea it would be this tall to be honest. Um, maybe I might in the fall remove them and replace, or not replace, place them further in the back so that when they come back next year, if they come back next year, they will be placed in a better uh, area. The other thing I noticed about Snapdragon is this. So we had some crazy rain, crazy wind um, last week. And if you notice here, this flower stem it's a bit bent in a funny, awkward way. And it's gonna stay this way based on my research. So because it fell over and the stem started to grow like this way towards the sun to correct, um, I guess, its position, it's now gonna be stuck like this. It is not going to straighten itself back up like this anymore. So this could be something someone like if you have it say planted in a planter and it happens to fall over and trail upwards it might be a good look because one of my other um flower pot that happened to it and it, i didn't mind it at all but that's one of the things i noticed about snapdragons that i didn't know prior to it, it growing in my garden but yeah you know what I, I think they've earned a spot in my garden i just really love this color it's so pretty look at it is it not so pretty so this one will be coming back. Well, hopefully it will be coming back anyways because it's a perennial, but if it doesn't come back, I will definitely be seeding more. Another beauty that I love in my garden that I started from seed. Here's a seed packet right here. Oops, I need to refocus. Here is the package that I got the seeds from. And this is what it looks like. 
once it is in full bloom. It's quite tall, so you wouldn't want to put it. So if you take a look here, let me just, yeah, focus here. You see that's its pot right there. It sends up a really long stem. And then at the top of it, you will have the uh, flower blooms. And it comes in so many different colors. I think at the beginning of the season, I had another pot here with two other different colors, but I've now moved it to the front of my house. So I don't have it on display right now, but I might be able to find pictures or video of it. This one is also non-stop blooming, gorgeous. It's so pretty and I love this color because it plays, look at this, it plays so well with the rest of my color scheme. So this one, first year growing in my garden ever, started from seed, but it is definitely coming back next year and many more years to come. So Negociana, if you've never grown it, I highly recommend this one in your garden. Okay, so next we uh, have is the, um, oh my God, coleus. This is a bunch of coleus that I have uh, started from seed. So this was the package and to my delight and to my surprise, see how the package only has like one variety. I thought maybe that's kind of all I would get, but no, this package has so many different colors in it. So this is from the same package. The one that I just highlight there is from the same package. Let's swing over here. Same package right here. And then of course this green one too. It came with so many different colors. And the best thing, other best attribute about coleus that I learned this year. So you see here, there's a bin of smaller uh, plants, three of them. So I had propagated these a few weeks ago and they propagate so easy, so easy to make new plants. So I started off from here. The reason I started doing this is was because this one right here, I believe it was this one I chopped it off. It got super tall. So I just lopped up the top of it and then instead of throwing it away because I thought it would be super wasteful and because I like the color so much, I wanted more of it. I just stuck the tip of it here. You can see there's some baby plants here. These guys, three here was in this bin earlier and I just uh, chance planted it here today. So as you can see, they are super easy to germinate. So that's one of the best thing about coleus that I really, really like. And the fact that it comes in so many different varieties of colors. And as you can see, I dot them all over. Let's come over here. I'll show you another color. Oh, I have so many actually. Here it is, more of it, same package, all started about the same time. This one was another one that I propagated from a mother plant. So there's two in here. I just chance planted this. Oh, I forgot to water, so it's a bit wilty. But yes, got two new plants from that. And then this color here is gorgeous also. A lot of people pinch off the flowers, but you know what I noticed from my experience this year, just pinching it off, it comes back so quickly anyway. So you know what? I'm going to stop pinching off the flower and just leave it be. So there it is. Comes in so many different colors. And the way I use it is I just plop it in my flower beds here. Here you can see how much color texture it brings uh, to the collection or to the arrangements. So yes. Started from seed, super easy to germinate, pretty much 100% germination rate for these. And they do so well. Uh, this patch here is full sun. And as you can see, no sunburn, but it does change this color. So if you put it in the sun or if you put it in the shade, although it's the same plant, the coloring will change a little bit depending on how much sunlight it gets. Here's another green one. So yes, coleus is definitely coming back in my garden for many more years to come. And I love how versatile it is in my garden. Here is one that is still in bloom. I love this lilac color. It is so gorgeous. And as you can see, this is one plant only and it comes in and it blooms in a cluster like this. Just absolutely gorgeous. And then here's another one of it. 
and I as mentioned it is at the tail end of its blooming cycle so you can see here it is starting to form um, seed pods and I have collected these last year and I've been very successful reseeding it this year so this is a gorgeous variety this type is actually an annual it does not come back every year but it's so easy to um, um, seed that you would not have a problem I don't think um, starting indoors here's another color pretty pink color it also comes in like a magenta ish color but that one's out of bloom but over here these are late blooming for whatever reason because they're planted in this planter, I, I guess. Here's um, the lilac color again. I love these ones because their bloom lasts for a very long time. And you see here, it. I love flowers that do not have like one solid color. I love it when it starts off in one color and it kind of fades into something different. And it has a variety of different shades of the same color as the bloom um, ages. Here's still some that is lingering around. This one self-seeded itself here in the ground. I just left it to do its thing because I love it so much. But yeah, definitely Candy Tough, one that will be coming back in my garden uh, for years to come. I also bought, let me just quickly point out, I did not start these ones from seed, but they're, the flower blooms look almost exactly the same, but it is supposed to be a perennial type. I plop three, so one, two three here so i'm hoping to see them come back next year but the flower looks exactly the same as the ones that are the annual type and here we have the lissum this one is called royal carpet it has a purple um, coloring to it and i absolutely love growing these these are this is to, will be the second year that i have um, added them to my garden last year i started from seeds super easy to grow super successful getting them to mature and um they are starting to here you go they are starting to um peter out a little bit but um, they are still looking good. So what I normally would do is I would do a hard prune, chop off about half of it, and in a few weeks, it should reflush for me and produce more blooms. But I just absolutely adore this uh, purple, this coloring. It is so pretty. The white ones are not bad too. Oh, I don't have any more whites left. Oh, yes, I do. Here, the white ones are quite pretty too. And I also started those from seeds, but I gotta say, I really love this purple. Oh, here's another uh, pot of my gumfrina. So that concludes my video for today. I hope you have found the video um, enjoyable, informative, helpful in some way. If you yourself uh, are a gardener that start um, or have been successful, sorry, starting seeds indoor, I would love to hear. Uh, your thoughts and your methods of doing it. I would love to learn how else I'm able to improve on what I've, do, I've been doing um, for future projects or for next year or the following year or many more years to come. Gosh, I'm so bad with words today. It's one of those days. It's like, ah, things are just not coming out properly. Anyhow, thank you so much once again for watching my video and for the love and the support that I continue to receive from everybody. Um, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.